Right, the cold weather's gone. T-shirts again. Um, it's been bloody freezing, as you know. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull it out, turn it round, um, back it back in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the fuel tank out, have a look at the fuel system, jack it up, get the wheels off, take the front suspension apart, start scrubbing and cleaning. So like you say, the restoration starts at the front and works its way back. So get out the way and I'll pull it out. Battery's dead. Take two and get the booster pack on it. Is the booster pack switched on? Oh no. <laughs> Now it is. Push it from there. That's moving here. In the right place. You want to add up on that wall, didn't you? Yeah, it's fucking. 
Let me out. <coughs> right, before we start taking anything out, what we're going to do today, <coughs> take the fuel tank out. Now it's got four feeds on it, normally we only have three. Obviously, one of them is a bleeder pipe for the filler, so that's fine. The other one will be fuel out to the fuel pump. And the other one will be fuel retain. Um, and we've got a bleed the pipe here where I'm not sure where that goes. So that's the easiest one to disconnect. So we have that off there. And that one's connected, that one's on a hose. And the fuel tank isn't fixed in. Because he took the bolts out. Right now, let's see what we can see. Right. So we've got a hose on this side. Push the Jubilee clip. Flathead screwdriver, please, mate. We've probably put it in that tight that I can't get around here. So, to disconnect this Jubilee clip out, what we're going to need is a rubber glove and some tape. Right, okay. Just piss petrol all over this is lovely. Right, now that one there. Doesn't go anywhere, I'm not sure what you can see on this one. It goes nowhere, which tells me that that one is the return. Which one's still on the one? Should we put it? Yeah, and then we'll disconnect the battery so we're going to disconnect the fucking pipe now because that'll just degrease it. Right, so what we're going to do, it's a different design than mine. Right, get a bit of tissue, dry that off, and we're going to put the end of the finger of a rubber glove over it, and then once we've got that on, Tape up the rubber glove, that will keep shite out the tube. Um, and also, just protect it. Right, let's disconnect these three. We've got photos of where these go. That there, obviously, will be your fuel gauge on the dashboard. I'll just pop that up there, like, out of the way. Yeah, I was right, look, that's just a breather pipe. It goes down the back there. Yeah, they completely changed the way you built it. Like I say, this is a prototype, so it'll be very similar to mine, but slightly different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, what we need is to just cut one finger off. So, stick that over the end of the tube. There you go, take that on there. And then we'll figure out how to get in the other fucking side. Let me get the fuel tank out. Yeah, I ain't getting through there, am I? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um. I'm on the end there. Can you lift the tank up? and twist the front of it round that way a bit. Well, yeah. Right, hold it there. Is your bag in the front of the warrant? I'll have to be up. Is it what? 
Is your fuel tank in the front door? No, no, that's my fuel tank off my car. Because my, see that bit there? Yeah. The power steering rack. Mine is leaking. So I've got a Right, lift that tank up and take it out. Okay, so first thing that we've saw, I'm going to pull that down so you can get a better view of what's going on. Okay, fuel tanks out. First thing I've noticed. Obviously this is a prototype and he's built it slightly different from mine. Not a problem. First thing I've noticed is the fuel pump. It's tiny. The one on mine, although it's only a 4.2 V8 and this is a 5.3 V12, my fuel pump is about three times as big as this. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take that fuel pump out, not today, but we're going to change that and get rid of this daft glass filter look at all the shite in there see so we're gonna get rid of that and put a brand new fuel filter on it we're gonna take this out we're gonna put a bigger fuel pump on it brand new fuel filters and also what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put a swirl pot in there so I'll keep this because what we can do with our fuel pump is use that to run the swirl pot and then coming out the swirl pot I'll fit a bigger pump to run the um, to run the engine now, if you have a look down here See that power steering gator? Yeah. That's all split, so we'll change that as well. Which is not a big deal. Um, obviously they just unscrew that jubilee clip, slides it off, slides the new one on, which means taking the track rod ends off um, in order to get it off. And that's not a big deal because we're gonna take the whole of the front suspension apart and the rear suspension, we're gonna strip it all down clean it oh, your cups, clean it all up and put us all back together so um you probably noticed we're nice and tight on this wall no room to get in and out because what i'm going to do is do one corner at a time just because i haven't got the space so what we're going to do now is we're going to cover all these connections up with wd-40 jack it up and we're going to start stripping off that front corner suspension there now this here is a battery box that he's had in Oh yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to take that battery box out, right? That must go in the boot. In fact, I think it does. And he's got that connected to a little computer fan, look. So somewhere in the back, there'll be a little 12 volt switch <clears throat> to run that. So that's his battery box. So happy days, that can go somewhere safe. I'll leave it there for now. What we're going to do is we're going to clean all of this up. The likes of all that. We've got wire brush attachments that go in the in the in the drill. We're gonna clean all of this if we need to renew anything, we renew anything. Um and then we're gonna repaint it all and we'll make it all look sexy and shiny. So the next job is to get the front wheel off to jack it up and then start taking stuff off it. Yep. There you go, first um challenge of the day. I can only get the jack in. On a small angle, all right, onto the chassis, which means I've got six inches, maybe ten inches of pull for the jack to work because that first part there, look, that's just a little play and doesn't do nothing. And just to cheer me up even more, wheels are held on with Allen keys, hex bolts, so I'm gonna to have to find an Allen key to fit them now to get the wheel off. So I can start stripping the suspension. It's going to be one of them days. Okay. Found these sexy little gizmos in the glove box. You just unscrew the wheel nuts with them. If you want to take the last one right out, obviously you would have to floor. The wheel is grating and grinding. So obviously we're going to replace the brakes, but I'm not sure about the wheel bearing. I'll find out once I've freed the brakes off. So I press pause, 
I'll put it back on in a minute. You don't need to see me take a wheel off, you know how that's done. Right, front wheel's off. So, let's have a look at what we can see. All right, we've got an adjustable shock absorber there. Independent wishbones all round. So, because I built my car and I recognize exactly what I'm looking at, this is the front corner of an XJS Jag V12 or a Daimler double V6. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the brakes off, which is two bolts on the back that hold the back of the caliper on. All right, and then from there, we take these out here, because these are the old stud pattern, and obviously he's machined this up when he's made it and made this spacer. So we take these nuts off, standard socket, that will come off, and then underneath there, there'll be more bolts that hold the disc on. And then we'll strip the front down and get all of this stripped down. And then we can get through everything and show you what's going on. What we've got there is a Jaguar four-pot caliper. And this car's got Jag four pots all round. So these are the brakes that you would find on the front of an XJS V12 Jag. And obviously on the front normally you'd have two big calipers, two small ones on the back. Well, this has actually got four. It's got two on the front, two on the back, and two handbrake calipers as well. So what I'm going to do is jack it up a little bit further, get that dolly underneath here. Then I can lower the jack down and get us out of the way. And then obviously I'm not sitting on the floor with my legs under the car. That's only supposed to buy a jack. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to jack it up, get that dolly in. Um, well, I'm going to cover everything in WD-40 first, penetrating fluids, and then let us all soak in while I'm getting the front off but it won't take me long to strip this down obviously we're going to buy two brand new discs and pads well same on the back so two sets of brake discs two sets of pads and I'll show you a little trick for testing each individual piston once we've got it stripped apart okay hi so just having a quick look underneath it's actually not bad you can see a bit of and it's there, but that's just where it's been curbs on the fiberglass, nothing in the aluminium, sorry. Nothing spectacular, like you say, once we get closer to that level, we'll clean all this off and re-underseal it. But from here, it's just exactly the same as mine underneath, there's pretty much no difference. Um, yeah, it's exactly the same. So, what I'll do is I'll lower the trolley jack down now, sit the car on this dolly, and if I can straighten the wheels up, the bonus of having it like that is once it's down, I can pull the car towards me or against me. So I can move the car side to side and work on the opposite side. So, yeah, we're getting there. Right, brake caliper's off. I'm on my own, so setting the camera up is just a little bit awkward. But what I'll do is I'll show you exactly what I've done on the other side. And now I stripped it down. It's only a couple of bolts. But that's spinning really nice, which tells me my wheel bearings are fine. And it's just the brakes that I seized on. But I'm going to continue stripping anyway, because I want to get this brake disc off. Because we're going to put brand new brake discs on. Obviously, I want to clean all this down um, and repaint it all. So I can get at it better once I've got the brake disc off. Ooh, I've just had a thunk. If I take that off there, that cap take the crown nut off I should be able to take the whole assembly off and dismantle it in the vise that would make right so far we've taken the dust cap off underneath the dust cap with the nut and on top of the nut it's just this crown nut here right and on the top of that we pour oops I dropped it A split pin. So you take the split pin out, take that off, undo this nut. Alright, now, how am I going to do this on my own? I'll just try and film it for you. Now, what you'll find, let me just, is that this entire hub assembly will come off. There you go. So if I, that's what I wanted to catch. That is the inner bearing, which we will clean up in a bit. All right, just move them pair of long noses out of the way. 
And then when we take this off, that there then is what you call a half shaft, right? And lower subframe assembly. So we're going to clean all of this. I'll clean all the grease off that, clean all that out. Have a look at the bearings. I don't think I'll need new bearings. But if you have a look on the inside of the disc, look. It's all rotted away. So I'll cover all of that in, um, what's it called? WD-40. Get the wire brush on it first. Get most of the cack off. So I've been using the screwdrivers for. Get most of the cack off. And then I can get WD-40 in there. Take the brake disc off. And then that's just one more part to go in the bin. But in the meantime, I'll clean this off and I'll wrap it up in kitchen paper or blue roll or whatever you want to call it um, and just protect that because we're going to be doing lots of scrubbing, rubbing, cleaning and generally reconditioning of the suspension. All the suspension works fine, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it needs a bit of a clean up. It needs a bit of an update. So that's where we're up to on this bit. Okay, this is the first disc brake, as you can see. It's got loads of meat on it, and some minge bag had gone, oh, you can recondition that, but I can't be asked. Right, it's what's called a vented disc, because the air can get through these gaps here, uh, which cools it down when you're on heavy braking. But, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's a very slight lip. So what I could do is I could get this spun up and machines and cleans. I could probably do it with a wire brush, to be honest, but... I can't be bothered, so we want to put it back together as best we can. So, what we're going to do is get the, Allen, uh, the sockets on it. If I remember rightly, they're about half inch. Where's that? Let's try that one. There you go, first time. Not bad, not a bad guess. I'll use a cracking bar on this because I've no idea how tight it's going to be. Yeah, that was right. That's tight. Might need to get a bit of heat on this. Lever, lever, what have we got for the lever? What do we use here today? <laughs> we use the Uber, remember now. Alright, never mind. We'll give it a tap with the tapping tool. That's not a perfect fit anyway. Next size down. Let's try that one. No, that's not it. I bought some this. Magnet on a stick. So, when you drop your sockets, and if you haven't got a magnet on a stick, go and get one that about three quid. It will save you hours and hours of messing around. Okay now. Right, that one there is solid. It looks like this one's gonna need. Keep going. Okay now. <laughs> right, these are rock solid. Absolutely rock solid. Oh, hang on, hang on a minute. That could be. Yeah, it is. Them bolts. They go right through. They're actually the stud bolts. So them bolts that are going through come right through. Yeah, they're the stud bolts that I'm trying to get out there. So let's see if I can get this plate off. See if that gives me any more play. Twenty-one. Could be that nineteen. That's down there on the floor. Twenty. 
Hang on. Let's try that one way again. It's a bit loose. He's a longer lever. Hold on a minute. <laughs> that there, in case you're wondering, is the jack, the jack handle. Which is about four and a half foot long. As far as leverage goes, I win that game. This one. Now obviously, because this is an old disc and it's going in the bin, I'm not worried about putting it in a vice, but you would never, right, you would never put, why are there two washers on there? You would never put a brand new disc in a vice, because that's just the quickest way to mangle your disc up. Right, swap that. If I can get the fucking thing off, hang on. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. This is something Vince has made and slightly different from mine. See, See that look he's made that. So leave that one there. One thing about Vince. That's the fella who, um, who originally built the kit, Vince of RV Dynamics. All right, he's a bloody good engineer. And um, everything I've had off on that he's built being absolutely top floor. It's been a long time since I slipped the front of one of these down. I can't even remember how the back of it goes together. Yeah, I'm gonna get to it. 
So you can see, you can see, well once we've cleaned it up, you will do. You see the machine in it, it's done on this um, spacer plate, it's bloody brilliant. Yeah, that's gonna. That's gonna be a nightmare to get off there. It's coming now. Is what you don't wanna do. Is ruin the threads. Let me have them. Got a minute. Hang on a minute. There you go. How's that? So that there is the space that he's made to go on the back. How oh, are we? No fast, I'm just um, talking to myself on the camera. <laughs> so the front suspension is half stripped down, obviously the caliper's off. What I'm doing now is I've just stripped off the space on the front. So what I'm going to try to do now is open the bolts on the back. Let me take the big disc off. And then this bit's done. So we're going to need more WD40. I've, I've got a box of these in the garage, in my garage. Right, but these here. Solid, right. Let's get rid of that. Go back to the cracking bar. It's fu I've done the fucking gloves caught in it, haven't you? So. Oh, I've done it again. Fucking the figures are. There you go. Right. So. Ready? Shift yards. Get that in there. Nice and slow, push it down. Cool. There you go, you got it. All right, and the next one. It's all about levers. Go on. I've got no class to that, no class, so I don't have to be there till like 10 to 6. Is going to be done? Oh, yeah. All four with the level along it. And uh, the other things that will be walk safe in an hour or two, so. Happy days, mate. Just one more. Yeah, fit the, uh, fit the new towers at the weekend. Happy days. Where's um, that box of trays and stuff, you know, the stuff that's in the van? Is it still in the van? Box of trays? You know, the storage compartment. Oh, the, so are these? Yeah. Yeah, they're in the van. All right. It's just, that's um, what I said before. Do you want them in here? Well, we'll do. It's just, yeah, because once I've got this off, this disc off, we can... Um, Hang on a minute. Here we are. Well, no, I'm going to reassemble it, just so we don't lose nothing. So what I will need is one of these boxes empty. Empty two of them, doesn't it? This one here, that's set up for palace wheels. Oh, that's empty. Yeah, no, right, no worries. So.
there's um we're gonna have to get the heat going on the track rod ends mm. on the end of the control arm to warm that up because I don't want to smash the ass out of it. I'll probably put two new track rod ends on anyway, because only got 20 quid each. And then we'll have to take it down once we've rebuilt it all into a full wheel. Oh, Unless we get the micrometer and measure everything to like the fucking quarter of a millimetre type thing and put us all back exactly the same way. We'll have to take it down to the four wheel alignment centre and have all of the um, suspension realigned. That should be... There you go. That there is the hub that we're going to reuse. And that there is our first bit of scrap. So that's um, the old brake That's the old brake disc. So obviously we're going to put brand new brake discs on it, brand new brake pads. But that there, there you go. Put glove on because it's absolutely manky. Yeah. Um, and then what we'll do, we'll clean all of this up and off and see what's going on. But that should just need a good clean. Good clean, degrease, bit of paint, re-grease, pop it all back together. Yep. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reassemble this now. So obviously that's not tight. So if when you're stripping stuff apart, you put all your bolts back where they came from, you won't lose any. And it just makes life a little bit easier further down the line. Now the good thing about this, bearing in mind this hasn't been apart since he built it, what, 20 years ago? Is when he built it, he's covered it in um, red red grease. What's the name of that red grease? I don't remember. Silicon grease, is it? Copper grease, that's what it's called. So he's covered the whole thing in copper grease. Which means came apart with the exception of surface rust came apart fairly easy so do you know what I haven't got on the floor in my garage under the car there's loads of um, sheet aluminium I want to make some soft jaws for this vice just to stop it biting into anything that's um, got a surface edge to it. There you go. So, Just so we don't lose nothing, just put these spaces back on. In the back of my car, 
Grab the heat one. The oven? Yeah. It's in a cardboard box with some grinders and stuff. Right. I'm not gonna um, move the camera because I'm full of oil. But that there is the front hub assembly of the Jag. So what you've got is the wheel spacer, hub assembly, bearings go in here, brake disc as you know goes on the back. So what we'll do with this now is I'll pop it in this big plastic box that's down here under the counter. And then that can stay safe in there. So we come to put everything back together. All I've used is a little tapper, a little hammer. Screwdriver, I'll have to get better screwdrivers in this shite. Couple of sockets. Now, if you put your sockets away like this, next time you come to use them, you're going to get kicked in cap. So it's worth it's spending just a couple of seconds. Do it with a quick wipe. Put it back together. And again, a good trick to get all the... Um, all the gun cough is just spray it with a little easy 40. I'll get a clean tissue and show you. Alright, a little bit of WZ40. That'll protect it and degrease it. So before you put anything away, give it a bit of a wipe. And then everybody's happy. There you go, now everything back where it should be. So that when you come to start again, all your tools are in the right place. What we've got here is the control arm. These two bolts go behind this upright. One goes to the bottom of the brake caliper, and the other one goes through that bolt over there. All right. Now obviously, over time, these just rust and weld in. That's the track control arm there, the track rod end. So when you turn your wheel, this goes in and out, this controls your steering. Now you can just hit it with a hammer, but you'll knock it in. So, <clears throat> for the sake of a couple of minutes with a heat gun, and believe it or not, this will give enough heat. <coughs> we put it on the steel, the steel gets hot, the steel will expand, and you should be able to knock it right out. Bit more heat. So could take two minutes, could take an hour. Just depends on how much heat goes through. Because mm -hmm. okay, that should be hot enough. Simple as that. Couple of minutes with a heat gun. What was that? Two minutes at the most. Mm -hmm. Now, because that look looks like crap. What we'll do is get that in a vice, give that a good scrub, dig it back to bare steel. See, this is just years of corrosion. See, all that'll come off. Well, I'm just rubbing that with a pair of pliers because that wire brush is a bit shallow. Yeah, look. There's a serial number there. Yeah, look at that. Just for the sake of 30 seconds, you go from that to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put out on the vice, give everywhere a good scrub, um, and then repaint it all. So that's for a future episodes, but that's more or less the front stripped down. So what we'll do now, I've got to clean film this up. That's just to protect that arm shaft. And then we can attack it all. So we've got to decide whether or not to take all this apart and do it or see whether or not we can get away with just doing the bad bits and I'm looking at it I think we might get away yeah I will, we will we'll get away with not dismantling it fully these little skinny wire brushes 
can get in between there. We'll take the suspension apart, take that off. Clean all the shocky up. But yeah, we'll get away with that. So, just the surface rust. That needs to come off. Like I say, everything on there works and it all works fine. It's just the surface rust. So, yeah, good stuff. We don't have to strip it all down. Just attack it. Now, what I've done is I've ordered. Yeah, they're poly bushes. I've ordered a set of them wire discs that go in the angle grinder. So we'll get that on it. But the main thing I want to do is see all that. Look. See all that? Yeah. I want to get all that cleaned off. Back to bare metal and painted. So, I'll put them two back on there. It's probably going to get new, um, what are they called? New track rods ends anyway, but at least we know where they are. See what you'll find with some people, just zoom in over here, lads. They'll open the nut up like that and then start whacking it with the hammer. And all it does is just knack his only track rod ends up. That's come off clean. And to be honest, if that's not split, you can put that back on. But we've got to take the track rod ends off anyway to get the rubber gaiters off to put two new rubber gaiters on. So we may as well change it all while we're at it. For the sake of about, what, 20 quid a side. We'll get them redone. Well, that can go in the parts box and be cleaned. Just remember when you're putting these on, these are handed, left and right handed. So don't... Um, don't get them mixed up because they won't fit. It pretty much goes on there. Like that. See? See that there? Yeah. Yeah. So, that's how that goes. Right then. Here we roll. There's nothing I can do now with the tools apart from. Tidy up. And um, we can spend a couple of hours cleaning this now. And then get on the other side and do all that. Let's have a look. Have we got any more of that to worry, Z? Yeah. 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 Yeah.